Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode. Today we're looking at a crazy storyteller. This is a party game with storytelling and memory mechanics. The game is for 3 to 6 players and takes around 45 minutes to play. The game is designed by Stefan Dora and Ralph Zorlunde and is published by Mandu Games and Mekovo. A Crazy Storyteller is the latest board game release from Mandu Games and Mekovo in 2024. It is a new and rethemed version of the previous game, Donkey Bridge. Worth to note that the gameplay is identical in these two games. Both of these games re-implement an older game from the same game designers, called Esselbrücke. Esselbrücke was originally released in German by Schmidt Spiele in 2011 for the first edition and 2012 for the second edition. A Chinese edition of the German second edition was later released in 2014 by the Taiwanese publisher Swan Pan Asia. The game never had an official English release. In A Crazy Storyteller, the players create short memorable stories using randomly drawn keyword cards, then try to recall the t details of the stories told by other players. Let's dive into a side-by-side -side comparison of both games. I'll show you all of the components and the game boxes. Then I'll teach you how to play A Crazy Storyteller. So these are all of the components and game boxes from both games. Let's start out with the game boxes. Rule books, Keyword cards and tiles. Active player markers. Ezelbrücke also includes blocker cards. Player boards. Thought bubble. And a bag for the keyword tiles. And that's all of the components and game boxes from both games. Now let me teach you how to play a crazy storyteller. And then I'll tell you how it differs from Esselbrücke. The players set up the game as displayed here. The game is played in two phases, which are divided into several rounds. In each phase, there will be as many rounds as there are players. The player with the most collected cards at the end of the game wins. The players select the first player, and that player takes the first player marker. The two phases in the game are the following. In the first phase, the narrative phase, each player has a chance to start one story, which will be continued by the other players. In the second phase, the recollection phase, the stories are reconstructed by the group with one story per round. Let's take a closer look at each phase. The narrative phase. 1. Play cards. The game is played with each player starting with 6 cards in their hand. On their turn, a player chooses a card from their hand and places it face up in front of them. If this is the first card of the round, the player starts a short one or two sentence story that includes the item depicted on their card. Then the next player in clockwise order plays a card in front of themselves and continues that story, following the same rules mentioned earlier. This continues until a certain amount of cards are played. The number of cards played by each player before the story complete depends on the number of players. For 3 players, the story ends once each player has played 3 cards. For 4 to 5 players, the story ends once each player has played 2 cards. For 6 players, the story ends once each player has played 1 card. Once the story is complete, the first player collects all the played cards, shuffles them and sets them aside face down. These cards will be used in the recollection phase. 2. Complete your hand. All players refill their hand size back to 6 cards by drawing keyword cards from the draw pile. 3. Start a new round. A new round begins. The next player in clockwise order takes the first player marker and becomes the new first player. They then follow the same rules as in the play card section mentioned earlier. The narrative phase ends when all players have played have, have been the first player. Once the narrative phase is over, or all players discard the remaining cards, and the recollection phase begins. Recollection phase. It is now time to remember all of the stories told by other players. 1. Deal cards. The first player, which is the same first player who started the narrative phase, 
takes the cards that, that they set aside face down at the, at the end of the first round of the narrative phase. They now deal these cards face down and equally to all players, including themselves. 2. Remember the stories. The first player now checks their cards. Each card is associated with the story that they started during the narrative phase. The first player must now name a card that was part of the story. It can be anything, except the cards that they already have in hand. Once the first player has mentioned a card, all other players check if they have it. If yes, then they reveal it and place it face up in front of the first player. Each card is worth one point at the end of the game. 3. Start a new round. A new round begins. The next player in clockwise order becomes the new first player. The players follow the same rules as in the recollection phase sections 1 and 2 which I mentioned earlier. The recollection phase ends when all players have been the first player in this phase. Game end. The game ends after the recollection phase, once all stories have been resolved. Each card that you collected during the recollection phase is worth 1 point. The player with the most cards wins the game. And that's how you play a crazy storyteller. Azul Burke Overview The game was designed by Stefan Dara and Ralph Zerlende, with the artwork by Michael Menzel. The game is published by Schmitz Spiele for the German version and Swan Pan Asia for the Chinese version. The, ga the game can be played by 3 to 12 players. Azul Burke is a game where players create mnemonic stories to help remember randomly drawn symbols and objects. The game has 7 rounds, and the first 5 rounds, players make up stories about the picture cards they have in their hand. From round 3 onward, and after telling their story, the players have to guess the pictures from previous rounds based on the stories. It's worth noting that in round 6 and 7, there is no storytelling, so the players would only have to guess the pictures in those two rounds. Players can earn win winning cards by correctly guessing the pictures. If a player makes a mistake, they have to give up some of their winning cards. If a player tells a story that helps everyone remember the pictures correctly, they can place a blocker card on their pile of winning cards. The game was originally released in German by Schmitz Spiele in 2011 for the first edition and 2012 for the second edition. A Chinese edition of the German second edition was later released in 2014 by the Taiwanese publisher Swan Pan Asia. The game never had an official English release. Donkey Bridge Overview Ezel Brooke was re-implemented by Donkey Bridge in 2022. Donkey Bridge is designed by the same game designers Stefan Dor and Ralph Zarlande, illustrated by Hami and Michael Menzel. The game is published by the Korean publisher Mandu Games. The game can be played by 3 to 6 players. It's worth noting that this version comes in both Korean and English. A Crazy Storyteller Overview Later on in 2024, a re-themed version of Donkey Bridge was released by Mandu Games and McCoval, titled, which translates from Korean to A Crazy Storyteller. McCoval is a Korean entertainment content company that creates content using a media mix strategy such as animation, games and comics and develops character IP. The core gameplay in these two games are identical. Changes in Donkey Bridge, a crazy storyteller compared to Ezel Bruke. 1. Player count. The player count in Ezel Bruke is 3 to 12 players while in Donkey Bridge slash a crazy storyteller, it's 3 to 6 players. 2. Removal of game components. The, the blocker tiles, boards, thought bubble and bag have been removed from the game. 3. No fixed rounds. The game no longer has a fixed number of rounds. The number of rounds is now determined by the number of players. 4. Narrative structure change. The game is no longer structured as one player telling a complete story followed by the next player telling the next story and so on. Instead, each player now plays one card and tells part of the story, with the next player continuing the narrative and so on. 5. Two distinct phases. Narrative phase. During this phase, players come up with the stories by playing cards and adding to the narrative. Recollection phase. In this phase, players recall and recount the stories they had collectively created during the narrative phase. And these are all different, the differences and changes between these games.
A Crazy Storyteller is a party game with storytelling and memory mechanics. The game is for 3 to 6 players and takes around 45 minutes to play. The game is designed by Stefan Dara and Ralph Zerlende and is published by Mandu Games and McCovil. The theme and setting is pretty much pasted on from a McCovil IP. The artwork is super adorable. I really loved all of the different illustrations and the use of colors for all of the components in this game, including the game box. The components were standard. The cards used were standard, although they had a good feel, good feel to them. The first player marker looked super cute. A lovely, big and chunky wooden meeple. The game box included a basic insert and fit all the, and fit all the components snugly. The gameplay is really fun, enjoyable and very interactive. What I really enjoyed about this game is that each player can participate in the same story. Each player will have a wide selection of key item cards to choose from to construct and chip in the story. Another thing that I have enjoyed is that a player doesn't get penalized harshly by guessing incorrectly. The game is fast paced, very easy to learn and teach, plays really well at all player counts and typically takes around 45 minutes to play. I'm so glad that Mandu Games decided to go with a new re-implemented version of Essel Brouquet. There never used to be an English edition and hardly anyone talks about this game because it didn't see much international release. Now with Mandu Games version, English is available and players have the opportunity to experience this fun storytelling game. Donkey Bridge and a Crazy Storyteller are much more streamlined compared to Essel Brouquet and more interactive with the joint storytelling as a group. What I enjoyed about Izabruke is that once it's your turn, you really should try to tell an unforgettable story with the keyword tiles that you have in your hand, in the hopes of getting a blocker tile to protect your score pile. Although this is much harder said than done, and when you guess incorrectly in that game, you get severely punished by losing many tiles and points from your score pile. While it's fun to watch other guests incorrectly and deplete their score pile, it really sucks when it happens to you. It's kind of like a double-edged sword in a way. Another thing that I've enjoyed is that because the keyword tiles are in a foreign language, you can really go crazy with some of the tiles. Remember, a picture is worth a thousand words. So it's always a lot of fun to see what kind of stories or words the different players may use with those tiles. The game also takes much longer to play compared to Donkey Bridge slash a crazy storyteller. Donkey Bridge slash a crazy storyteller is a great option to play with family and children, while Ozil Bruke is a fun option to play with hobbyists. However, keep in mind there is no English release of this game. The keyword tiles are fairly straightforward. Although you might have some difficulty with some of them, you might need to do a little bit of paste up and house ruling might be in order if you don't speak German or Mandarin. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Take care and until the next one. Peace.